Hey everybody, welcome back to Lost Odyssey, it's Chocolate Milk here, and we, today we're going to be doing all of the uh, backtracking and looting of the White Boa. We didn't get to do it last time because we were too busy watching Jansen and Ming make out, so we're going to get all the treasure hunt information, treasure chests, and everything like that in this video, so now that we're actually allowed in the White Boa, the last time General Kakanas was chasing us through this area, and you weren't able to go into any of these little doors here, we can actually come in and uh, see what we missed. So there's not really a whole lot of things to get in the white boa, but it's still important to get these things. There's some pots, there's, there's some treasures, and you can rest in any of these rooms if you'd like to. Now I had to splice in a bunch of clips. As you can see, this clip is a little bit smaller than the other one because I was uh, recording and then I realized, because I had looked at a guide and I realized that I had missed a bunch of stuff, so I tried to go in, record something else, and splice it all in where it was relevant. So you'll see a lot of splicing and things like that. But uh, I wasn't paying attention to the size of my uh, video when I had recorded it and it came out in a 4-3 f uh, size rather than a 16-9 widescreen size, so that's going to annoy me when I <laughs> when I upload this, but um, it really doesn't make a difference. It's not like it's any less visible, but just so you know why that happened, it was because I wanted to make the white boa when I did the video for this 100% complete, so just keep that in mind, and if there is something that I missed, because there might be something I missed, you know, I might have missed, might have misread the guy a little bit, or just was feeling tired or something, and I missed something, feel free to point it out so that other viewers can see it and they will have a fair chance at, you know, completing the game and everything like that. But there's really not a lot in this guest area. There was that treasure hunt information by that guy standing on the other side here. There's these four rooms with the pots and the treasure chest in it. And then, before we leave the guest area, we want to come over here to where we actually first met Ming in the very, very start of the game, where Jansen had, uh, threw, like, gas in her face or whatever the heck he did. You want to come over here um, and she'll actually be looking at her harp. Now you have to wait until you see the this, this scene with Jansen and Ming to be able to, to do this because she's not technically in your party um, at that point. So She's actually going to take her harp with her. We get the key item Ming's harp and that's going to be used for a optional boss later on in the game which I will be doing much later. But for now we're just going to get that item while we're here. Just so we don't forget, but again, the white bow is something you can do at any time because it's your ship now, you have control of it. So, I just decided to do it now before we went to any of the major cities, or moved on to any other major cities, so... From the guest area, we're going to go to the main deck now, where we uh, saw Jansen and Ming, and we're going to get that little bit of treasure from the treasure hunt information, from the treasure hunt information that we just got from the guy we talked to in the guest area. Because he said that the treasure was on the deck. And it's just over here where the kids were spying on us. If I can pick it up, that would be fantastic. Thank you. I hate that these treasure hunt treasures are just so finicky. It's so it's so hard to pick them up sometimes. They just like to make a big deal of things. But that's about it for the deck. There's really nothing else there. The last place we're going to go is the engine area, which is where we were locked up <laughs> the first time we were here. We, this is actually where we were in prison. So, this is a little bit more useful and more friendly to us now. This guy here will give us some more treasure hunt information about the area around Kent. It's actually going to be in the water, and uh, we'll do that later, because it'll be on the world map. Once you have that, you can then go back to the brig. Now, I realize I'm taking the long way around. When I was recording the video, I was totally oblivious, I guess, of, of the shortcut. But after I recorded it and I looked at it, I was mad because I was like, wait, no, there, there's a shortcut. So, sorry, um, I, I've gone the long way around in this video, but there is a shortcut right there on, on the wall there. It's that ladder for those of you who are watching. And the only thing that we came down here for really was that treasure hunt information very, very briefly, and also this chest, which has a very, very important seed in it. Easily missable seed if you don't know what you're doing. And you find Jansen down here, which is kind of weird. You would think, I, I don't know why he's down there, quite honestly, but I'm just not going to ask questions and let him be. And again, I was totally oblivious of that ladder, and I just went around the long way again. 
I guess just because I like the white boa so much, I want to be stuck in here forever. But that's it. Again, not a whole lot to, not, not really not a whole lot of stuff to do on the white bow in all, in all, uh, in all truth, but all things, you know, that are, I guess, helpful along the way, and that is it. So, we're gonna go back up to the pilot house. There's a, um, there's a few things to do up here, I guess. There's the save point, a, a HP MP restore point, and we're gonna talk to a few of our party members here. Tolton's talking about how he was a wimp when he was a child. Like I said before, there's the ringmaker there, uh, the pit pod over here, if you didn't catch my last video. And after you get your party all back together by seeing the scene with Jansen and Ming, the shopkeeper will also be here. And he'll just sell you items and components if you need them. So he'll always be here if you need, you know, a really quick stock up on items. And if you go over and you go over to Mac, who is steering the ship, or I guess pretending, you actually get outside the map. And all of these glowing areas are all new areas we've never been to that are all accessible now that we have the white boa. Um, that's a lot of places to go. So before we go anywhere that's really, really new, I've decided to go back to uh, a major city again. We're going to be going back to Aura to start out with um, and just getting more stuff that is now available to us through getting to disc 4, having a full party and things like that. Um, because I like getting the major cities done first before we do any of the um, major side quests, optional bosses, and, and new areas and things like that. So. Uh, the backtracking aura videos are going to be a few as well. And I have to apologize because, again, like Numara, uh, I had started doing it without a guide, and then I looked at a guide and I realized how much stuff I missed. Um, so, again, a lot of, lots of stuff is going to be spliced in and out. So, yeah, apologize for that, and these are also kind of in a wacky order. We'll be kind of doing this in a really weird order, so be, be sure to watch all, th uh, I think there's about three of them, if you uh, want to get all the stuff, because I really didn't think it over as well as I should have when I went and recorded these, so I'm really sorry about that. The guy at the start there will give you a treasure hunt uh, information, and this guy here, if you talk to him, he'll give you uh, a letter for his father. And his father's actually in a new area that we can go to. He's in the station, station square by the royal palace. And before the palace wasn't even available to us uh, in, when we first started playing. So, bef But before we go there, we're going to go back to more familiar grounds by using the magic taxi. And we're actually just going to go to the central station square. And we're just going to do a f very few quick brief things. Now this part of the video is pretty much stuff that I remember just off the top of my head. So uh, this video is just going to be stuff that I remembered. And then in the second and third uh, video, it's just going to be things that um, the guide had helped me with. And just pretty much 100%ing the area. So stay tuned for those. Um, there's a dream in here I want to get, but I don't remember exactly where it is. I think it's on the top floor. But I think the thing does about four, three or four dreams in City of Aura we have to get. Because we're starting to get those dreams actually all finished up. All the dreams now are ones that we have to find for ourselves. The, the game's not going to give them to us anymore. The Queen's dream was the last one that we got. But it's this little girl over here with her dad. You just got to walk up to her and uh, you'll trigger a dream. Now, I think this one is actually available the first time you're in Aura with just Kaim, but again, I've never got this in the start of the game. I've always got it at the end. Doesn't matter what order you get these in, as long as you get them all. So this dream is Little Liar, which is actually a really sad dream, if you've ever read it, I think. Well, that's about it for the square, uh, the station square, really. We'll come back here later. There's, a, like I said, there's a few things that I missed when I came through here right now. So let's leave and see what else we can do. You've already looted this whole street. You know, you, you were here in the beginning of the game. You were here with Seth and Tolton, so I really think you probably have maxed out your opportunities to, to get all the stuff, really. Hopefully you haven't missed anything. And on the main street, again, if you walk up to this little boy here, another dream is available. Again, like I said, there's a few dreams in here.
be so weird if Kyle was just like staring at you. You'd be like, well, what are you looking at? Beyond the wall. It's that dream. I gotta record that one. I don't think I even have that one recorded to put up. And we get treasure hunt information from that dream too, so that's pretty cool. And we're gonna go to a very familiar place where we've had lots of dreams happen before. I think we've actually had like three dreams in this place. And we're gonna get uh, the next one. Um, if you've triggered the other dreams in, in the tavern, you can come back here and you can go up to this little boy here and his, his drunken father. Again, I think this one is available in the start of the game if you go in and out of the tavern enough times, but I always get this one later. And I think that's actually all the dreams in the city. I think I got all the other ones. Um, Mother Comes Home is going to be the final dream for the city unless we find one later on. And that's about it for uh, the actual city. Now I'm going to go and I really want to get this this next area out of the way because it's going to be really great for grinding before we go to the um, the next set of dungeons here. And we go to the, the, the few final dungeons. And I forgot to give this lady... We actually got this item back in the Highlands of Wool. And I didn't give it to her because I just forgot in the very beginning of the game. And it's not really important. It's not needed for any kind of achievement or anything. But I just wanted to do it because I remembered that I hadn't done it. So if you talk to this lady, when you pick up something in the Highlands of Wool, it's a... Uh, it's... I can't remember what the exact item is. But she'll give you just something really, really small for that. If, if you'd like to do that. And this guy over here, I always think he's a he's like a taxi driver, like he'll take you around the city, but he's not. However, he does not like a Gongora, which he shares in common with us. I don't like him much either. He'll just blab on about how much he hates him and then he'll eventually give us something. It's again, not important, but you, you, you can get it if you feel like it. And then I'm actually going to go to the next screen over to uh, Gungora's mansion. Now Gungora doesn't live in the mansion anymore, obviously. He's a, like a bored grandstaff, so you don't have to worry about running into him. Um, but there are some very, very interesting things we can see in Gungora's mansion, and we'll probably be coming back here a few times because there's some stuff I missed. But if you go to the door here, the, the doorman will always stop you, and he'll always ask you if, if you want to come in, and blah blah blah. And he's just asking you because there's um, there's there, there's monsters in here and stuff like that. So again, we looted Gongora's mansion earlier in the game, but now there's a few things that we can get in here. The first being actually um, an optional uh, it's like secret kind of dungeon. So if you come over here to the courtyard, now that we have Tolton, we can open up this seal. And most seals give us treasure, however, this one does not. It'll actually create a shortcut for us. As you can see by knocking down the seal there. It'll open up this staircase. So I'm going to do that in the next video. I hope you guys will be joining me then. Thanks so much for watching, and see you all later.